why is there something, rather than nothing? This question is as old as time and probably the most important question in philosophy and science. Science is mostly interested in how things are and why they are the way they are. As a result, it appears logical to proceed to the next step and inquire as to why things exist at all. Why does the universe exist, or why there is something rather than nothing? It was Leibniz, in the 18th century, who first explicitly asked this question. Leibniz's answer which later became a popular strategy for theists was that God is the reason the universe exists, but God doesn't require the reason for existence, since God exists necessarily. Later thinkers were not impressed by this reasoning. In particular, Hume and Kant explicitly dismissed the idea of a necessary being while Ludwig Wittgenstein suggested there were some things about which we should remain silent, it is not how things are in the world that is mystical, but that it exists. A major reason why it is so difficult to answer this question is that our experience of the world is actually confined to an extraordinarily tiny fraction of reality. It makes us very ill-equipped to think in appropriate ways about the question of the existence of the reality itself. It is also very difficult to resist the temptation to treat the universe as just another thing, like a stone or a smartphone whose existence can be accounted for in relatively familiar ways. Nevertheless, we can make some progress on the question of why reality exists, by looking at what modern physics and cosmology have taught us about the nature of the universe. One place where modern science has made an impact on the question is in the definitions of something and nothing. The universe can be thought of as a collection of stuff like matter energy and fields distributed through space and evolving with time. Then we can ask two kinds of questions. One, why is there anything inside the universe, rather than just an empty space? Two, why is there space at all? Why is there anything we would recognize as a universe? Clearly, it's the second question that most people have in mind and they ask why there is something rather than nothing, but answers to the first question can be thought of as derived from the answer to the second one. Newton provided a precise formalization of this picture. In the absence of external intervention, Newtonian absolute space is eternal, since the equations of motion can be extended infinitely far into the past or future. So in Newtonian framework, there is no natural context in which to talk about the creation of the universe, without explicitly invoking divine intervention or something equivalent. With the advent of special relativity by Einstein, space and time are combined into spacetime, and in general relativity, spacetime becomes dynamical and responsive to the presence of matter and energy. The basic paradigm remains the same, with one important exception, space-time itself can begin or end, in a big bang or big crunch singularity. In this framework, it is interesting to see this as a transition from nothing to something. Combining quantum mechanics with special relativity gives us quantum field theory. This is different than combining with general relativity which would then be a theory for quantum gravity. In quantum field theory, rather than individual particles, we have fields. And the theory allows for the lowest energy state called vacuum and excited states with a collection of particles. But the notion of the vacuum is subtle, as empty space isn't quite the same as nothing there. Even in the lowest energy state, there are still field degrees of freedom at every point in space, in a particular quantum configuration. These degrees of freedom are highly entangled with each other and can be probed by measurement devices. All of these theories we have mentioned are extremely well tested. But in the unknown we still don't understand what happens when quantum mechanics and gravity is combined. In quantum gravity, space-time itself has a quantum property. One consequence of quantum gravity is that the distinction between empty space and space filled with stuff is blurred, practically to invisibility. An intriguing modern idea is that space-time itself can be defined in terms of the entanglement between a set of abstract quantum degrees of freedom. The best we can say is that our current incomplete understanding of quantum gravity is fully compatible with both the possibility that the universe has lasted forever, and that it had the first moment in time. Having laid this groundwork, we can at last turn to the question of why anything exists at all.
Given these considerations, there is a list of options that might qualify as an answer to, why is there something rather than nothing? The idea that our reality was brought into existence by some being outside of reality is perhaps the most intuitively appealing explanation for its existence. In creation theory, there is something apart from physical reality, which brings it into existence and sustains it. This hypothetical entity is often identified with God in the literature. But there is not necessarily any strong connection with a traditional theistic conception of the divine. In metaverse theory, there exists a collection of truly distinct realities, and our reality is one of many. These different realities are non-interacting, not stemming from a common past, and not necessarily with the same laws of physics. We're imagining here something more profound than the traditional cosmological multiverse. The metaverse still faces a severe problem, as we are now left to explain the existence of multiple realities rather than just one. This is not to argue that such a metaverse could not in some sense exist. Aside from an actual being or metaverse, we might imagine that the best explanation takes the form of a principle that picks out our universe among all the conceivable ones. Perhaps our universe is the simplest one out of certain conditions, or perhaps all possible realities actually exist. The biggest obstacle is that it's hard to see, given what we know about the actual universe, what such a principle could possibly be. Future scientific discoveries could reveal such an answer. Perhaps the concept of nothingness is incoherent, and the possibility of reality not existing was never actually a viable option. Reality itself simply exists, in the way that it does, without further explanation.